Welcome to Tales of Marketing Transformation, laying firm foundations for your marketing journey. Tune out all the black magic and imagine a time where marketing has transformed into something human. Where marketing is about building relationships with people you serve. Where marketing is about helping people. That time is now. This is Tales of Marketing Transformation. And here's your host, internationally recognized marketer, speaker, and podcaster, Dr. Jürgen Strauss. Hello, and thanks for joining me on this quest to make marketing human again. Today is another marketing episode where we will dig further into the topic of marketing and making marketing human again. Head on over to talesofmarketingtransformation.com for the show notes to this episode and all the previous episodes in this particular series. In our last two marketing episodes, episode 26 and 29, we covered the know and like phases of our transformational marketing blueprint. Today, I'll cover the third phase, the trust phase. We reached the point where our dream customer has purchased something from us. What's next? The Transformational Marketing Blueprint is a 12-step framework for your marketing that acts as a guide through the entire marketing journey focused on your dream customers. The Blueprint is organized as a circular framework since no marketing journey is linear. And the Blueprint is in three phases, the No, the Like and the Trust phases. Each phase is color-coded for easy visual recognition and is made up of four steps. Today, I'll be covering the trust phase, closing the circle of our marketing journey. The four steps of this phase are how I deliver an exceptional experience, how I deliver more value, how I orchestrate and stimulate referrals, and then mastery celebrating and repeating and scaling up. First stage of this third phase, the trust phase, how I deliver an exceptional experience. The first thing we want to do once a sale has been made, once our dream customer has made a purchase, is reinforce and congratulate that decision to invest in themselves. This is important to emphasize that it is an investment in themselves and that encourages them to be a participant in the journey. Outstanding onboarding makes all the difference. Giving them immediate access, making it easy for them to access their purchase and even multiple options to access the purchase and being really clear about what the next steps are. Our focus at this point for our dream customer is on the transformation, not on the product or service. We want to enable them to achieve their goal, their desired after state that I've talked about in previous episodes. We don't want to leave anyone behind. So there's an accountability element to this, but there's also an accessibility element. They always have access to me as the service provider and to my community so that they're part of this journey along with everyone else. Of course, we need to provide outstanding customer service. Again, as I mentioned in previous episodes, we want to train them to be our customer and in how to use our product or service and give them appropriate support and access. For our customer experience, I like to think of the idea of having a customer experience management system, a system that works really well and that provides ongoing communication. And even if we have no news for our dream customer, that's still news. So keep communicating with them. The next step then, if we've given them this exceptional value, this exceptional experience with the product they've purchased or the service they've purchased, is to look at opportunities to partner for long-term value. 
And of course, the basis for this is always to deliver exceptional value. Keep giving them attention, keep nurturing the relationship, focusing on the transformation, on helping them achieve their goals and their desired after state. Really, we want to be obsessively committed to their success. We want to seek their feedback that helps us improve our existing products and services and also to uncover additional needs that they might have. And we do that by engaging with them in conversations. Out of those additional needs we might uncover, there could be opportunities for us to either develop or sell additional products or services that we have available right now or we can make available based on our areas of expertise. And the key thing here in terms of exceptional value is that dream customers, those that are already customers, should get first look at new products, should get the first opportunity at special deals. Don't fall into the trap that many businesses do of special offers for new customers, special privileges for new customers in the desire and the drive to grow their business and bring more people into their community, but at the expense of looking after existing customers. So nurture existing customers, current customers, and balance that with the need to attract new customers. I always like to say existing customers are first and best. And of course, focus on customer retention. Losing a customer that you've already worked so hard to build trust and a relationship with is a real downside of any business. So focus really on that retention and nurturing that relationship. What we want to do at this stage is really take our dream customer now that we have from a customer to a raving fan. And we've got to keep them loyal. We've got to look after them and make sure that they're not tempted to switch to one of our competitors. The next step of our trust phase is how we then orchestrate and stimulate referrals. Now, many customers who are really happy with the service we're providing and the results that they're getting will refer us to others and will provide referrals as well as testimonials. However, if we ask, we might get even more. Now, how do we get more referrals? Well, first of all, we give referrals. Once we know our dream customer's business really well, then we know who they can help and we can refer people to them. So we have a referral mindset and system that starts off with a giving, and of course, that will get us more received referrals. Then we can also ask for referrals and reviews and testimonials. Again, look for partnering opportunities. We, we can build networks. We can introduce our customers to the networks that we're already in. We can offer them affiliate opportunities if we have an affiliate program. We can look for joint venture opportunities where we can work together with them on new business opportunities. And maybe it's as simple as a marketing alliance. And as I said, networking, providing introductions, that's a really big one. And the final step of our 12-step transformational marketing blueprint is celebrate. We've reached, we've closed the circle now. So celebrate and repeat. When I say celebrate, take a moment to reflect the journey that we've been on as we've gone through this process, but also reward, surprise and delight customers as part of that celebration. And think of these rewards and surprises as something that is remarkable. We should always be remarkable. Then, of course, there's the operation and scale. So look at what we've done, look at opportunities for improvement, look at how we can refine things, how we can document it so we can bring other team members on board to help run this whole process and systemize it. Focus on efficiency and effectiveness. I like to think of this as innovation through continuous and never-ending improvement, and it's a mindset. 
of course, bring in automation where there are opportunities that it can add to the efficiency, but not automation that replaces that personal touch. There needs to be a balance there. Everything has to be profitable. So looking at our profitability and what we can do to improve that is key in this stage as well. And building measures and reports so that we can track everything. As I said in the automation example, keep it personal, keep our marketing human. Systems and processes, free time to spend on the relationships. And then look at the focus. So what's my focus having run this system up to this point? What's my focus now? Because I've built some systems, I've built some automation, I've given people tasks to do that I was doing in the first go round. Now I have some free time. What's my role in this whole process? I like to think of this as the queen bee role, as Mike Michalowicz puts it in Clockwork. Um, and the queen bee role is really the key thing to drive the business forward to grow the business. And part of that is growing the team, filling specific roles with the right people. Now at this point, the journey isn't over. The marketing journey continues at another level and always be focused on delivering exceptional value and keeping the relationships that we've built vibrant and alive. That covers our entire transformational marketing journey, the 12-step marketing framework which we use in our business and with our clients. My personal book recommendation for this episode is Clockwork by Mike Michalowicz. In this book, Mike describes how to build a business that runs like clockwork while you reclaim your freedom and stop grinding in your business. He introduces the concept of the queen bee role. The metaphor is that in the beehive, the queen bee lays the eggs that grow the colony. All the other bees protect the queen bee. Protecting the queen bee is the primary thing that determines the growth and the health of the colony. That's every bee's role in the colony. So they all have their own queen bee role. Every business has a primary goal that will determine how it will grow. Every task we do must serve the queen bee role. And again, it's a role, not a person. By focusing on serving and protecting the queen bee role, our business will grow rapidly, be more profitable and scale. Clockwork also deals with building systems in our business, empowering our employees, what to measure, how to run a stress test, hint, Go on a long vacation away from your business and see what happens. Get clockwork from your favourite bookstore. Thanks for listening to this episode. Follow the show notes to be reminded of new episodes. Leave a review because it helps other people find the show. And I invite you to share this episode or this show with everyone that you think it could help. After all, sharing is caring. Go to talesofmarketingtransformation.com to join our Marketing Transformation community. And there you'll get access to a free gift that my team and I prepared for you, the Marketing Master Mini Class. In that, we want to give you everything you need to transform your marketing into a human-centered, relationship-focused growth engine. Also, if you're looking to start a podcast or you need help with an existing podcast or maybe you're looking to do a podcast tour go as a guest on other people's podcasts and want to know how you can do that how you can connect with the right podcast hosts and how you can show up on every episode as your absolute best then reach out to me to have a conversation on how we might be able to help you with any of those things so that you can get out there you can Begin getting your voice heard and build your sustainable visibility, professional credibility and that deep connection with your dream clients. I'm Jürgen Strauss from Anovabiz. Until our next episode of Tales of Marketing Transformation, stay awesome and let's make marketing human again. Thanks for coming on this journey with Tales of Marketing Transformation. 
join us next week for another fabulous episode. For episode resources, visit www.talesofmarketingtransformation.com. Stay connected by subscribing at talesofmarketingtransformation.com forward slash subscribe.